Yes, I have a very long story, many, many stories that make up the Melissa Potter story. I, I want to say that the reason I feel like I can connect with people is not necessarily that it's a big gift, a special gift, although I do feel gifted, I, it's because of the path I've walked myself. So normally the people that come to me, um, I, I'm able to tap into them because I myself have experienced so many, many, many different things, different traumas, different... Well, by the time I was 12 years old, I was, uh, I would say, pretty much a full-blown alcoholic and drug addict. So uh, by 12, I was stealing cars. I was running through the streets just outside of Boston. I lived, I grew up. A um, uh, lot, of, lot of violence, a lot of trauma, a lot of shame, a lot of all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I will be eternally grateful. Uh, by the time I was 16, just about 17 years old, I had hit such a bottom already in such trauma that I was, I, I was brought to a place in life where I, it, it was definitely the grace of spirit because I, I, I didn't know myself then. So I can't say, oh, in my wisdom, I came to this place because I didn't. I, I was, it was grace that brought me there to that point of such desperation that I was suicidal when I was 16, almost 17 years old. And the lifestyle I was living was so intensely just, you know, horrible, that I was brought to the lowest place I could go. And from there, I, I was blessed to like, begin a healing journey through a series of events that brought me, you know, to the right people and the right time and the right place. And next thing you know, I, I was standing at that crossroads and, and I, I chose, thank God, to walk the path that would lead to, to my healing. We talk about the power of one moment, and really we try to focus on something in your life where you had the opportunity to make a choice, make a change, something that may have come up in a flash of a moment where you may have said, that's it, this is enough, I, I need to do something for me now. If we were to kind of pick out of all the moments that you've had, a power of one moment where you may not have realized it at that time, but you said, this is where I'm making a change. Mm -hmm. I remember the night vividly, okay? There, there was one night in my life at, at that time that I walked into a room and it was, it was in a Knights of Columbus. It was an event in, on a Wednesday night in Melrose, Massachusetts. And I walked in and I saw a man and woman who my father used to sit around on Saturday nights and go to the bar room with and they would play cards and drink alcohol and get drunk and they were these wild crazy people. And there she was and her name was Wilma. I mean literally her name was Wilma Jo Gillespie and I'll thank <laughs> Wilma for the rest of my life. Um, she was there and she had gotten clean and sober and she told me about that. And then when she told me what her anniversary date was, she said it was July 23rd, which is my birthday. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that. I, I can't believe you, you got clean and sober on my birthday. I, I mean, I really believe she was put in my life and this woman had a whole other energy. She was just glowing with love and joy and happiness and warmth. And um, she invited me to go with her and her husband to back to their house to see their kids and, and on and on, it just went. And, uh, th but that night was the night that hit me. And I realized I was not bad. I was just, at that time, I was sick and suffering at the time with addiction. Um, the next morning, it just hit me and I said, I, 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 I knew, I just knew I did not have to live that life anymore, that I could go and I didn't believe I didn't believe, I didn't know anything about myself yet. I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't know where I would, as a matter of fact, I didn't think I had a future. I, I couldn't even imagine that I would ever be a grown up, that I would ever get to be an adult. It, it was so hopeless and dark back then, but I got, but that night I got hope. At Mother Roots, I have a, I have a small center, healing center, where I see clients for 
um, a little massage therapy, some healing body work, um, craniosacral therapy, which includes somato-emotional release work. During a craniosacral therapy session, the client is lying down on the massage table, uh, nice and relaxed with gentle music playing. And I, the therapist, will, uh, there are certain listening points along the body where I'm, I'm holding their ankles and their hips and their rib cage and uh, along the base of their skull. And I'm feeling the body's craniosacral rhythm, the cerebrospinal fluid in the body makes up this beautiful wave-like motion. And as I feel along the body, I'm gonna be able to tell where there is a blockage, where the rhythm is not as full and vibrant. And that's where I would then go and treat. Um, during craniosacral therapy, very often uh, there's, there are traumas from an accident or maybe possibly an emotional trauma that's stored in the body and the craniosacral therapy helps to release this in a very gentle way from the body because i definitely believe in mind body spirit healing all in one i believe fully in treating mind body soul so while my hands are on your body we are also at times dialoguing and the client is able to release emotions they're feeling. And I'm working on the energy centers of the body as well that happen to coincide with all of the physiological, uh, you, know, you know, I'm working on the physical body here with my craniosacral therapy, but they happen to correspond with the chakra system as well. Uh -huh. So, and I'm also, um, I, I do energy work and I, I love doing energy work and tuning into the, the client's body so it's all happening at once and I have faith that whatever I kind of tap into the healed part of the client their inner wisdom their inner physician is what we call it in craniosacral therapy and while we're working whatever that whatever's needed kind of just comes yes so, so along with my skills I also feel very guided and intuitive. My work is very intuitive and it's, uh, each person is treated uniquely, individually. And I remind them that their body is communicating to me. Their own inner wisdom is telling me this and then, you know, uh, spirit is working through me. But really it's just, it's a oneness that's built with each client. It's a connection, a bond. And their wisdom is speaking to me. I, I, I think so many of us are just dying to be witnessed. And once a therapist, as a therapist, once I have my hands on the body, it's like all the parts of the client say, finally, somebody is watching, somebody's listening to me, somebody, somebody wants to see me. I've been trying to talk for so long. And that's the place I go with the client. All I can tell you is you are entitled to joy, you are entitled to happiness, and you are entitled to start your own friendship with yourself. And that may not be something that you've thought of before, but that's something that you can do today and let that be the beginning of your own power of one. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure.